So in the next few vlogs, we're going to be looking at some tactica with the idea of cutting down the learning curve. Wherever you are right now in your wargaming system, whatever system that you're playing, there's this idea that to develop your tactica, to develop your player personality, to get good and win, you have to put in time. You have to play games, 10, 15, 20, 30 games. Now, naturally, while you're building and painting your miniatures, you're going to be checking out Tactica, watching videos, listening to vlogs. If you're part of a gaming group, getting direct feedback on what you're doing correct, on what's costing you the game. And through this natural organic process, it creates a learning curve. And at some point, at some point, it's going to switch. You're going to start winning more games. You're going to start impacting the tactica, or if you're playing big battles, big group games, making massive contributions. So from that perspective, and I'm just throwing a number out there because I don't know what system you're playing, if it's going to take you 20 games to start getting that win, can we listen to the next three or four Wargaming Tactica vlogs and cut that down by five games, eight games? Let's, let's get a little bit ambitious here and see what we can do. So we're going to be exploring ideas from that top, top level, and we're not going to get into specific systems because this DNA, this mechanics, this environment exists in every single wargaming system. I've used it for Battletech, X-Wing Miniatures, Warhammer 40,000, Historical, Chain of Command, DBA, DBN, God Tier. Heck, some of it I'm even using for Hero Quest right now, jumping into Hero Quest. It is a board game. It is a dungeon crawler, but... We've got some dice, we've got some battles, we've got some tactics, pushing that forward. So the first and most important thing, in my mind, I'm trying to organize this in terms of impact, active versus passive players. Now, this is, this is my terminology to, to capture certain ideas, to capture um, certain tactica on the tabletop. There are not regular definitions, and, and certainly this is not rules-based. So as I put out my terminology, naturally adapt it, change it, make it better. Think of it, how it applies to your own wargaming system and, and your own player personality. Active versus passive. A passive player, and in the beginning, this is how many of us play. A passive player is one that you have your army set up or your armada or your warband, whatever it's going to be, and you react to what the opponent does. So they move up a unit to the center of the table. And you're like, well, they're going to look to take this objective. I better, I better push up two or three of my units. They have some fast moving units on the side. They're going to try and flank. And you say, wow, they're going to try and flank. So I should refuse flank. And you pull some units away from the flank or push some units over there. Or they're attacking on all fronts. And you say, well, those units I have in reserve that I was saving, I should move up. You are passive in that you are reacting to what your opponent does. This is dangerous for two reasons. By reacting, you're always going to be one step behind your opponent. You're always going to be one step behind. This is costing you momentum. This is costing you mission objectives. And the most important piece is, do you really know what your opponent is doing? Now, in the next vlog, we're going to find out ways of discovery of what your opponent's doing. But do you really know what they're going to do? Yes, you have a certain idea based on the mission. Fritz is going to send up those guys and take the center. You have a certain idea based on units. Fritz, my man, is playing all these corn berserkers. He's going to try and charge in for glory. But do you ever really know? So this stalls out momentum. Wargaming momentum is the ability to affect the table, to affect the mission, and to affect your opponent. If you're passive, you're one or two or three steps behind. You don't really know what they're going to do. You have an idea, and if you commit, well, look, they're going to go to take this objective because it's an easy objective to take. You shift over a lot of your units to park on that objective, and then something happens, they don't take it. Now you have to redeploy, or you're weak somewhere else. We don't want to be passive. Now, active. I call this active because originally it was, it was aggressive, but that, that label has um, something not really friendly in wargaming. I, I don't want to be aggressive to my opponent. I do want to be aggressive with the mission objectives in my playing, but I, I think active Switching from active to passive captures this feeling a little bit better. But I'll leave that definition up to you. An active player is one that forces choice on their opponent. It's a player that every turn, yes, you're looking at the opposing models. You have to take into account your opponent. 
but they know every single turn what they're doing. I'm sending this unit up to the center of the table to capture that objective. That is their mission. I'm taking these units, I'm pushing it over to the side. They're engaging there. Yes, my opponent has a wall of steel and has miniatures and elements and models up to try and stop me, but this is what they're supposed to do and go over there. I'll find a way to break through. An active player is one that plays the mission and is aggressive and has momentum every single turn. If something doesn't quite work out, then they readjust. They readjust. You need to be an active player. By being an active player, now you are making the most efficient use of every turn. It's your turn. You are advancing your army, armada, elements, warband, and you are working to advance the mission goals. Capture this, remove this, take that, be at this point at the table to get the points, capture the god tiers, whatever it's going to be. We want to be an active, active player. So in your Tactica, and of course, this is naturally a little bit challenging in the beginning because you're jumping into that wargaming system and you're learning the rules, you're figuring out base tactics, you're navigating maybe even multiple units depending on the size of the war game. You've got five or six different missions to play. Yes, there is a learning curve. But as soon as you switch to active, you will have momentum, you will create opportunity, and you will shift the, the momentum away from your opponent. They will be playing catch-up. They will be making mistakes. And anytime you make a mistake in wargaming, that answers the question, or I should say, excuse me, that asks the question, are you in a position to capitalize on that mistake? 